they've gone too far. They've gone too far, and this is where they're having to steer back. This is why their movies are crashing and burning. All right, before we get to Andrew Young, who actually works on these blockbuster kids movies, I want to talk about Cardio Miracle. I had a recent experience, went to my cardiologist. He told me that, and I'm a heart patient, right? Told me that my arteries look fantastic. They look better than they have looked since I had my surgery seven years ago uh, on my heart. In addition, in that same consultation, I had the lowest reading of blood pressure I have had in my adult life. Uh, my gout has reduced, been reduced significantly. There are specific scientific benefits biologically to nitric oxide. And Cardio Miracle is a great way for you to get that nitric oxide. Look in the description box and or on the card we have above here on YouTube for the link for Cardio Miracle to find out more. It is something you need to look at. It's something that I take every single day. I've gotten rid of a number of other supplements and replaced them with Cardio Miracle. So click on that link. Here we go. Welcome to Quick Show. My name is Greg Matson, and I am your host. In this episode, we bring back Andrew Young from our last episode last week, talking about social engineering in Hollywood and in kids' entertainment. Andrew, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Everyone came at us with so many comments and so many things. They had more questions, uh, and we want to answer them. People want examples. We're going to give them a lot of examples. Uh, people want it. People were pretty mad that I gave any indication of supporting these organizations. <laughs> uh, I'll explain, but you're right. You should never support anything that you don't agree with. If there's content you don't agree with, you should never support it. That's, 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 that was what should have come across. Right. And right. Now don't worry about it because on this show, typically no, no. I always get comments from people that are a little mad about something. I mean, well, we hit okay, the controversial, but... <laughs> controversial topics. So there, there's always a few people that are a little upset, but would love and to have a, you explain it. It's a righteous anger they have, and that's good. We need that right now, okay? So if you don't believe in something and people are hitting it with a megaphone all across our country in your home, you should be the first to defend against it. So that's a great attitude you have. I merely am trying to save it in the process before everything goes down the crap hole. Uh, okay. Other cool thing is all of you reached out from the industry. I had guys reaching out from ILM, guys reaching out from Disney. Just got off the phone with one. Shout out to Joe Derrick. He's got his own studio in LA. I could not believe it. People have been reaching out all over from the industry. All of them are like spot on. Oh my gosh. Thank you. All of them are like, yes, we're trying to deal with this. They're like, there's like a, they're like a silent artistic majority just bottled up. Do you think uh, it's, do you think it is a silent majority? In oh, hundred percent. Oh, really? it's probably a hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Artists are craftsmen. When you're looking at, look at behind me. We are like construction workers with a tool boat full of like tablets and pencils and paintbrushes and personality. That's what we are. No, we do not think in the dark corners of how we're going to screw with people's kids. It is a very, very small minority. And that's what this episode's about. We're going to give you all the examples. But before I do, I don't want you guys to get angry. I want you guys, I want to put you in a frame of mind before I do this. Uh, and the frame of mind is this. This topic is not about movies. This topic is not just about social engineering. It is about children. This is about the experience they have growing up, the experience you had growing up, how we are developing them. And all of these organizations, organizations we're talking about, like the Boy Scouts, Disney, DreamWorks, the church, all of these are things that mold these kids. And we come from the same worry you have, is that uh, they are not giving the kids the right development. Uh, not all of them, uh, some of them are not. And so we're coming to empower parents to make sure, well, we're just gonna show you the examples and show you, so you can identify what's being Lots targeted. Lots of examples. Lots of examples, more than I've ever shown what you can do to talk, what is being targeted so you can identify it and then what to do about it. I have some great ideas. I hope you like them. But before uh, we go on, let, I mean, let's just move on. Enough, enough talking. Let's, let's just show them. 
hit the first one, which should be right where we ended off last time, uh, the Lego movie. This target is about men wait, and boys. Wait, You've already minute. seen it. When everyone became the special, didn't we all become leaders? No offense. I sense no leadership qualities from you. My readout confirms you to be soft, fragile, and a less than worthy opponent. Hey, you want now, as parents, as caretakers of kids, the target we're identifying here that Lego Movie is doing is the demasculinization of boys. All right taking away their natural inherent ability and design to be leaders, to be strong, to bring security. And this is happening across the board. I'm using examples throughout all of this that are obvious and from multiple studios. So it's pretty crystal clear what's happening. This is happening not just uh, in Lego movies. It's happening in video games. It's happening in um, school. It's happening in universities. It's happening in our culture and the culture that has weak boys does not end well, okay? This is not something women in our society wants going forward, having boys that are not able to rise up to the challenges of what they're gonna to come to. Anyways, the Lego movie targets this as well as uh, several others, but it's a hyper, hyper feminist example. We went over it last time. The next example we're gonna go on to, I mean, you saw some of the things that they were showing the Lego guys. Mm -hmm. Think what that does to the kid watching that. I mean, this is who we're talking about. We're talking about the kid playing video games, the, 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 the kids watching this over and over and over again. When they see that character not able to solve anything, which a lot of the movies have, you'll see. Uh, weak, uh, constantly pushing off any sort of ability to accomplish anything. It's uh, it's 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 woven throughout the entire movie. Well, so anyways, replaced by a female who can solve everything. Right, right. That, right. And that's, this is a common thread. So as a parent, as anyone, you can identify this over and over and over again in dad characters, in guy characters, in girl characters. And it's becoming more and more, uh, uh, it's becoming more and more in everything we, we're, we're seeing. So you don't want to raise your boys like this. We're also having the negative where we're getting rid of things like the Boy Scouts and other things that help them be, uh, be men, be prepared, be brave, and all those other things. The next clip we're going to go over, because we have like 20, the next clip we're going to go over is a, uh, it's a target that not many people realize. It's a little more subtle. It's one of the biggest things we would do at DreamWorks is target this. And all over, it's being targeted, and that is the elders or the older folks, their traditions, and people that come from sort of a traditional background. Most people would call them like conservatives politically, but this spans well beyond politics. These are traditional the older folks, there's this gap that they're trying to increase this distance between the youth and the older folks, the wisdom that they would bring down, sort of like the turning the hearts of the fathers and the children and back and forth, sort of like cutting that off. And so, it's, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, because I've noticed this as well, but it's kind of like you have the staunchy old parents or grandparents that. set in their ways, rigid, and then that. this instead of getting this wisdom that would be passed down has, has always followed through culture. There's actually almost this wisdom that comes from the kids up. Right. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it's where, a where it's like back, the new backwards. generation has learned this new stuff. And, and now they're going to go against what, what tradition has is supposed so, to be teaching. Them. So watch how it's being done. It's the next clip. Cause I gave them to you all in order. Watch how it's being done and notice how the older folks are portrayed and notice how the people of tradition, in this case, it's a religious tradition. This is a really this goes into Christmas. I'm going to show you two clips in this case. It's a religious tradition. And you will once you see this as one of the targets, you will see it everywhere from the from the burning of statues to the uh, burning of historical figures. This goes hand in hand. The tradition and the history uh, uh, break apart goes hand in hand with uh, some of the goals. That was one of the questions people had was what is the end goal? Uh, we will get to that. Uh, but essentially, it is like demasculating boys. It is to make us weak, make us weak and subservient. OK, and one of the things that is a pillar that a culture relies on is their tradition. This is what Rome relied on, their tradition, as they separated themselves from their traditions, their their uh, their their legends and their 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 their, their stories, and their epic heroes. They became what they became, uh, 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 people that couldn't do anything. Uh, I'm going to go too far. Let's watch the clip. Let's watch this the one, clip. This is the frozen one, correct? Yeah. Okay. Let the holidays begin. Okay. Now. <laughs> Surprise! 
Uh oh. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Going so soon? The Yule Bell rang. I must get home for my family's holiday tradition. Rolling the left, sir. Um, Ours is putting out. Okay, so we're hearing the tradition there already. Stopping mm -hmm. it for copyright purposes. We'll keep Go going ahead. here. Yeah, and you'll notice this came out during Christmas. You'll notice mm. all of the traditions being basically uh, overlooked. And basically, you'll see who becomes the bad guys. And Because you, you love these ladies. You love these ladies. These are the characters that you be, grow to admire. You love the snowmen. You grow to admire them. So when these people of tradition, so let me explain how it works. When these people who have ingrained traditions, like you folks, uh, religious folks, people that have traditions, when these people do the cruelest thing they could do, which is abandon these ladies and this uh, snowman, when they basically prioritize themselves over them, you begin to grow animosity towards them and their traditions. Mm. So keep watch what happens. Porridge for the Tom Tom. Well, we're, we're making traditional board stavelbackles. And I'm gonna fillet the crumbs of the kringly conca. That's a thing, right? Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Olsen, you're welcome to join us in the castle if you'd like. Thank you, Your Majesty. But Olga and I should be getting home to knit socks for our grandchildren. It's our tradition. <laughs> yes, and we wouldn't want to intrude on your family traditions. Okay. Tradition again. Yeah. Boy, they're hitting yeah, it over and over again here. Yeah, but also you'll notice who they are. They're old. They are obese. Not these ones, but some of the other ones. They are uh, hunched. They are not appealing. And so we would do this often. In fact, you're going to see this as a historical thing when I show you that. They look the, the, religious even in their dress. Yes, yes. And we would do that. We made characters look like members of the church, how they dressed. Okay. Yeah. So you, th this, this is the beginning, and this is subtle. I want to start with a subtle one, then we're going to get to where it's going. Uh, this is the beginning of causing kids and people. To, by the way, this comes out during Christmas, this, mm -hmm. when they released this. And the, the audience has since rejected this. This, this crashed and burned, thankfully. It, uh, and uh, yeah, keep, keep going so you can keep, keep going and play. Hmm. Oh, so the surprise is everyone left. Boom. The surprise is everyone left. Abandonment. There's nothing worse you can do to someone than abandon them. So you're left with your heroines, your girl characters who everyone loves, and your snowman left by all the stodgy old farts and their traditions that they have during Christmas. <clears throat> Seems like a small thing, but over time it has begun to erode our core traditions. And it's not just happening there. You're seeing it very, very aggressive in other fronts with the historical characters, the holidays you're seeing those trying to be changed uh and so anyways let's watch the next clip now and you'll see where it's taken the target here you will not believe is christ so we go even further now to christianity there it is this when we... short copyright break We're okay hate to put this in here but for copyright purposes we have to chop this up here we go. It's my favorite. Short copyright break. Short copyright break. Short copyright break. Well, I think Arendelle has a new tradition. Thank you, Olaf. <laughs> tradition. <laughs> They've gone too far. They've gone too far, and this is where they're having to steer back. This is why their movies are crashing and burning. Uh, it's one thing to put a star on there. It's one thing to throw the snowman in the star. What people don't realize is the original version had Olaf, I kid you not, resurrecting from the snow like Christ. Uh, this is the beginnings of what you'll see more and more. It's not even the beginnings. We're there. Uh, of an anti-Christian. Uh, can you imagine if this happened to like a, a Jewish faith on a menorah or a, uh, um, a, a Muslim type of Dome of the Rock uh, series? Uh, point is, the target here is the tradition. In this case, it's the Christianity traditions. Notice what's happening from uh, different angles, not just media, and how this is being treated. Um, you don't want a world where Christianity is under threat. You don't want a world where... So, Andrew, uh, you're saying Christ in the original version, that they, they cut out a scene that had the snowman resurrecting? From the, from the, uh, from the um, snowflakes or the, 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 the icicles into the star. Yeah. What do you think a kid, so, so let's go back to why this is important. What does a child begin to associate all this was with and deassociate everything else with? This is why it was so crazy. I would be working on a shot 
And I would be like, well, this is just like a star shot. And I didn't work on this movie. I'm just seeing the ties of what we were doing at DreamWorks everywhere else. And I'm trying to help explain because we go back and forth and it's happening across the board. Okay. By the way, all of these guys who called me since the last podcast from Disney, from ILM, from other parts of the industry, one guy worked on Lilo and Stitch. None of them said this wasn't happening. They all said it was happening They all, across in these other studios. So what do you think the child begins to associate uh, Christmas with? Uh, that our traditions with, well, it's working. Christianity is not gaining, it's going down, okay? We are not gaining numbers. We are not having people flocking towards Christianity or towards a Christmas-esque type of tradition. We're having them abandon it. And so the reason I'm talking about this is because what I saw is when you abandon those, uh, the traditions on a, on a big scale, like in America or in a bigger uh, culture, it, it begins to break apart. I saw an encapsulated form when I was at DreamWorks, okay? DreamWorks, its value was telling good stories, okay? We're going to show one of the good stories it told, okay? As it veered away from that and, and prioritized propaganda or these uh, indoctrinations that I'm calling social engineer engineering, as it prioritized that, it weakened their value and they broke apart, you'll see. This is happening at Disney. It's happening in America. And this break apart, this breakdown is what we're trying to stop. What's interesting is I know, I know psychologically, I've read these studies that, that early on, the earlier you go, especially the first four years of your life, but the earlier you go in your childhood, the more you absorb your environment and the more you form your character. Totally. So, oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, if I'm 18, I'm not affected as much, and, and my, my character isn't being as formed as strongly as when I'm eight. No. Yes. Right. Uh, so, yes, so if you're if you're able to get, if you're sitting your kids, what I'm saying, from ages two to 12, for example, on repeat, on, on repeat, repeat in these things, and with their, you know, on on, on the screens and, and and on your iPads, etc. That. I mean, based on psychological studies, there you're getting more and more affected as a as, as you as you get younger. As you, you, a kid. Even, you might think to yourself, "Well, yeah. this is no big deal. They're not going to pick up on these things. They're only five years old." But this is where they absorb all of this. For those who haven't watched any of the other podcasts, what we're talking about is social engineering. It's architecting the minds of people. It's done through media and through a lot of other different ways. Uh, but we're talking about primarily about how it's done for children through movies. You'll see a whole bunch of different examples over history. I'll get to adults later on. Uh, yeah. So anyways, this is a big target tradition. You need to watch out for that. You need to watch out in your experiences, when you're around, when you're hearing things, when you're seeing things. Is this targeting tradition? It doesn't end well when you start stripping away the pillars of your culture. So let's go to the next one. Is this uh, this is the positive one? Uh, yeah, we ha this, I don't want this to be too heavy. So I'm going to show you how parents can deal with it in their home because I'm going through the same thing and everyone is. And we don't want to have our children hate us because they go to their friends, and they play games or or, there, or, or there, there's a lot of people that commented and said, look, my mother-in-law or someone's doing this. I have no say. They, they, don't, they think I'm crazy. Uh, I, I have no ability to intervene. Yes, you do. You, you can always intervene with time. And there's no influence from media ca that can override a uh, stable and consistent parent. Okay, You will always be the number one influence if you could maintain that. It's only in a void that any of this works. And so, uh, And that is studied within these organizations to find out if it's effective or not. And so when you are uh, worried about this, I want to show some examples of how I'm dealing with it, okay? So you're going to see some raw clips from home. Go ahead. Uh, tell us why you're sad. Sorry. No, tell us what you want. Tell us what you want to have happen. <laughs> but why are you sad? I said we could. You don't want me to go watch the basketball game? I want to watch Frozen. With who? Okay, I said we would. Are you Can happy mom now? Watch? Can mom watch with you? Do you want mom to watch it with you? Mm -hmm. I want dad and mom. What about us? You can if you want. <laughs> okay. Not funny. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I love you, sorry. What do you say? What do you want to watch? Frozen with the ruby red slippers. Wait, we can watch ruby red slippers? You'll do that one? What's that? I watch that one with you? Yeah, 
slippers. I'll watch Ruby Red slippers with you. No, no one likes Ruby Red slippers. Yeah, Goldie. it's like one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, you guys like the it. first one where they had color. Stop. Jenny, what do you want to watch? I want to go to bed and eat more food and fetch. <laughs> And what? <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. Go we'll watch Red Slippers, okay? No. Happy? No, I want to watch the game. All right. What? That ball. Do you see that ball right there? What is it? That's my favorite part of this. What is it? <laughs> You'll see. It's a fairy. It's a witch, but she's nice. Wave. The what the spirit guy. Yeah, that's right. So you can wear it, and this is kind of what the spirit feels like. But we'll get there in a minute. Okay. What does it say? Jesus Christ. Christ swelleth himself unto the people of Nephi as the multitude were gathered together in the land of Bothumium and did minister unto them and on this wise did he shew himself unto them. He'd be so proud of you. He'd be so proud. Okay. Well done, Dad. <laughs> The point of this movie is to show you've got some options, okay? You and they'll choose right. You've got some options. She she really loves Frozen, okay? She sees it at her friends, and let's say she would have chose to watch it. You got to be with them. You got to be with them, okay? You can ban it. You can throw it out. Some of you are going to do that, and that's fine. No one's going to argue against that. It's just getting really hard to ban everything. And so if you can spend the time with them, they will not have the associations take effect. The, the, the social engineering won't work. They'll walk away from the movie loving you as their father. They'll, they'll, they'll embrace that time with you. And that bond will break any weakening of men or showing them as idiots or showing them as stupid or showing tradition as awful. It, it won't work as they see you and you spend that time with them. And often there are just as good examples without social engineering. Now, I'm sure there's something in Wizard of Oz. I don't know. It just seems harmless, but I'm sure there's stuff. But I don't know. But either way, it's not so destructive as what I'm seeing in the more modern stuff. What, what ends up happening is she does emulate stuff. She does begin to form, and her name is Goldie, by the way, <laughs> Marigold. She does begin to form habits and do things. Did you see what she was doing on the sidewalk? She's, she wanted those shoes. She wanted to walk on the sidewalk. They do emulate what they see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And movie creators know this. Corrupt SOBs know this that want to screw with our kids. And good people know this that want to set good examples. Notice I never forced them to do anything. I'm not trying to force them. They do need to do what I say if there's something dangerous. But I'm trying as best as I can because there's going to come a time when I can't force them. And so I want them to try to make choices and I want to try to give them a lot of options. And I want to try to, uh, um, uh, you know, I, you, you saw the boys, you saw the boys. I literally left my house and uh, because this is my studio, but I left my house. And what happened was he was still wearing that towel, my, my Rockwell. He was wearing that towel that he got and, and Taj is reading. So they will make good choices. But above all, it doesn't even matter this, this is like, maybe, I hope this is helpful. It doesn't even matter if you have it in your household. It does, it does, but not really if you are there to intervene, okay? If you are with them, it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible for it to work. Well, almost in these examples, Andrew, you're, you're kind of helping them to make their decisions. But, but more importantly, I would say you're showing them how to make a decision. Yeah. In yeah, other words, yeah. if the option's there for Frozen... <laughs> She has a decision, but you're showing her because that option is there, right? It's kind of like we did partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? <laughs> yeah. We do yeah. have frozen, 
right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're helping her to to help her. This is how dad talked me through it. This is how I learned to walk through this and make a decision. And I did enjoy The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's so rewarding. Again, we're talking about children and the experience they have as they develop. Uh, wow, what a what a sacred uh, activity we get to go through in this life. And so, yeah, you do want to be with them as they're navigating this stuff that has poison in it. It used to just be, is this rated R or does this have like a sex scene or a swear word in it? This is not that, that that's easy. This is not just bad stuff. This is poisonous stuff, okay? The ratings do not catch it. You can't vid angel it. It's buried in the story. It is the narrative, okay? Your spirit understands something is wrong. There's so many comments of people who have been like, I knew this. Finally, someone has been able to talk about what I was feeling and what I was thinking, but I felt so weird about it. You, you're, you're right. You're right. It is resonating in the wrong way. And so you're right. So, so anyways, we're going to give some examples of how you can actually work with it and how you can deal with it. And it is totally fine to just say no. It is totally fine. And sometimes I do. I'm going to give an example where I said, absolutely not. This is over. This is done. No, we're not doing this. And I put on the dad face and I said, if you have a problem with it, then let's wrestle. And they can't beat me yet. So we that didn't get we didn't get to that. So let's go to the next clip and you'll start to see where this is going. Master Shifu. Uh, 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 I can't hit Shifu. Oh, here, pause for a second. Okay, I didn't even tell you what you're looking for. This is one of my favorite movies, series. The first one is so amazing and it is so enlightened and it is so wonderful the director is she is the most she is so amazing and it got social engineered more and more and more until ultimately it was a propaganda piece and you're going to notice again the traditional elders which steve in the last podcast pointed out which is amazing the traditional elders are being defeated being turned into stone their knowledge and what the elders can give to you are being overlooked and then marriage is being basically just crashed on the floor motherhood just you we don't need this it's complete garbage because this is what we got coming down the pipe here you go i can and so can i <laughs> double dad defense left dad right dad thanks dad back at you dad we've got this son oh go dad yeah let's finish this that's our boy yeah, normalizing the motherless relationship. This you'll see a lot. You will see it over and over again. I noticed they're doing it in uh, corporations. They're using a lot of Caucasians. They generally don't use diversity in this, uh, which it's amazingly being targeted highly at uh, Caucasian men uh, to normalize this motherless, womanless relationship that you can take care of anything and you don't need any old stodgy folks telling you what it's, what's wrong and right. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Let's start hitting them really quick so people get this. If you have any questions about them, put them in the comments and I can try to elaborate more on them. This is the one I did. So so this it, it needs some explanation. This is you. This is members of the church. Your title was, from the producer and the director, the religious zealot who voted for Proposition 8. That's what, that's what your term was. Okay, I don't know what the terms were in the other ones. We're calling them stodgy old folks or tradition. But these ones, you were, and this is how this all started, was this movie, uh, Peabody and Sherman. And, uh, but these directors are not just DreamWorks directors. They directed Lion King. They directed uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast, several others. And they're still directing and doing things. They produce these. They worked very, very hand in hand across the board. Um, and uh, yeah, you are the religious zealot who voted for Proposition 8. But I do have to hand it to DreamWorks after uh, I took my job to do it. And uh, after bringing it up and, and having to leave over it and having a lot of meetings. And you can hear these in the other podcasts, what the whole meeting went like. Uh, in the Raising Family podcast, the whole story is there. Um, it cost my job, but we were able to take the proclamation of the family out of this movie. What they were doing is how you do social engineering is you take a villain, okay, or someone you have developed in a story to, so that people hate, okay? They'll be mean to animals, they'll be cruel, they'll be awful, and in this case, with no reason, and this is why it's starting to break down and not work. Because generally when people are cruel, there's some sort of backstory. We had no backstory, and that's what caused all of this. Artists started getting mad, even gay artists. He was the guy who spearheaded all this. He was mad. There was no backstory for this villain. And that's actually what, uh, what, what brought it over to me. So what happens is you take 
the words of a people you hate. In this case, it is members of the church, Catholics, Heritage Foundation. You take the things they believe and they say, and you put them in the mouths of villains. In this case, it's Grunion. She's an overweight, obese school counselor who's just cruel from start to finish. You have her say these things and then do something psychotic. And then the child or the adult will associate that idea with a villain or a psychopath. So in this case, we were having her do a lot of things that did get removed. So I do thank them for that. And they deserve the respect and applause for taking it out. They should have done it and they shouldn't have done, well, they should have not done it from the beginning. And they should have done it just when people started bringing it up. And especially when I bring it, I was the only one that had to quit over it and had to leave and had to make a big explosion over it. They shouldn't have done it from the beginning. But what they were doing is they would have her say words from the proclamation of the family, from the Heritage Foundation, from the Catholic Church, such as, and I quote, the foundation of our society is the family. And then she would scream and throw axes at everyone, like a psychopath, throwing axes at historical figures that you're going to see. So again, she would scream, the foundation of our society is the family. And she would throw axes, do cruel things to animals. And then there's all of these other different things throughout the entire movie where she's mean to the dog, where she's not understanding about adoption. She's not understanding about uh, different sort of relationships. Basically, you, making you a villain. That's what the purpose of this was. So it's not going to be in there because it got taken out. But this is what started it all. This is the, well, I'm sorry, it didn't start it all, but this is what uh, put me into the position I was put in where I had to choose between my faith, my beliefs, the proclamation of the family, everything I knew to be true from history about what stable families do to hold together cultures and civilizations, and my job, my paycheck, and everything else. And it's a long story. You can hear it on that other podcast, but let's watch it and you can begin to see. They Let me just ask. Let me just ask you this, Andrew, though. So, so you're talking about why, how this got taken out. But why, how does it get in no, there? No. I mean, how does something it's, this, it's, this obvious get placed in there? Is there already a script in place, and then there's another layer of writers that come in and say, we're going to add this in, or we're going to make this yeah. character do this? What, what happens in that circumstance? A lot of folks are asking about this, and I guess this is a good way to say it. The politicians and activists are becoming movie makers and the movie makers are becoming activists and politicians and it should have never happened. And most of their ideas, and they're, they're doing terrible at both of those roles. The politicians are coming in, the activist groups are coming in and they're using it as an instrument of control and an instrument of what it is, social engineering to architect your mind, okay? So you got activist groups and politicians I have not yet seen them with a noble motive. Their motives are bad and they are coming in. I, I will show you, Obama would be there. Bill Clinton would be there. There would be other politicians who would be there. There would be activist groups there. They would control and influence the writing of the story. This is not happening down on the grunt level. This is happening at the owner, the CEO. This is happening at the director and the producer. I did not make this up. The, the producer laid this out to us. She explained this to me. I did not make any of this up, okay? It's in a meeting. They probably have it recorded because we generally recorded everything we did, all right? But she is the one that came up. And she's the one that said we are, that the villain is the religious zealot who voted for Proposition 8, and this is why we're making this, okay? The director followed Sue. And then in the final meeting, when we pleaded with him and asked him, me and, uh, me and, me and the gay guy, we were asking, please, well, is there any other social engineering? Did you develop a backstory? Is there any other political propaganda or agendas in this movie to which the director paused in front of the entire studio for longer than it was beyond long than comfortable, maybe about seven seconds, which is a long time if we were to do it. And his response was, none intentional. It's, it's, come on, this is kids. You're screwing up their experience. Like you're ruining it. We are ruining it. And then when the studios start doing this, because they have these voices, writers are being told what to do. Producers are being told what to do. They do not come in the studio and say, I want to create a propaganda piece. No, no, no. We're not like that. They are not like that. They are being influenced by activists and they are being socially engineered themselves to believe that this is some sort of cause that they have to insert and have to indoctrinate kids with. They're screwing with you, the parents, which is your role to teach the child how they should be taught because you have the most self-interest for their well-being. These people do not have the best self-interest for your children. And this is why it is screwing them up. This is why we are where we are at today. This I is why. 
Go, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say that's why it's so important to hear that directly from you with those specific examples, because otherwise this becomes conspiracy, right? No, Which no. Well, like, oh, you're looking into these things too much, Andrew. You're looking I too said, far into this. If I said what I was saying, do you know how badly I would be sued if it wasn't true? Do you know how liability I would have if this was a lie? Do you know what that would do to this and my, my family and everything? Okay. I didn't make this up. I didn't come up with this. I didn't ask for it. This is what we are living in. And I do think we were born. I do think you were born to try to benevolently correct this. Okay. And we're going to, I'm going to give you some ideas, but I, the spirit and God and your own conscience and your own judgment is going to help you do this. And we'll go, I believe we are going to reverse it. We are going to reverse this, okay? They will either crumble, change like they are. They will either crumble like they are already crumbling. We are watching a slow-mo car crash of Disney right now, and we are already watching the crash of DreamWorks. It's already total, okay? And Boy Scouts and the beginnings is why I lump a lot of them because all of their audience is children and families, and, they're and they are doing to children and family the same thing, and they are getting the same result, abandonment from their audience, disillusion, and a breakdown. OK, I believe we are in the time to help correct this. OK, because you can see where everything is going on all different spheres. Uh, uh, you know what they are. They're everything from media to corporate to, 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 to everything, to government, Lobbying to every groups, et cetera. everything, everything. It's, it's a cancer that has seeped into everything. OK, so 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 you are at a position where you can fix it. You can help it. Um, yeah. So so and there was something else, but I forgot. But we can go on to the. The, the next oh so here it is here's the clip so go ahead in a multiplicity of major traffic violations you don't understand there's a rip in the space-time continuum if you arrest me i won't be able to blah, fix blah blah for too long you bamboozled the world with your fancy jargon and that little red tie of yours and look what's come of it take him away wait oh. mr peabody sherman <laughs> What's gonna happen to Mr. Peabody? Don't you know what happens to dogs that bite? Okay, I'm just gonna pause it there for a second. So yeah, originally she was dressed just like you folks go to church, black and white. And uh, this is about the time where she starts hurling axes, thankfully, and I am grateful for them. It cost me my job, but they did get rid of it. So keep going. <gasps> Let me go. You don't know what you're doing. Please, before it's too late. Wait! <laughs> Give him another chance. He's through with chances. Now he has to pay for his mistakes. But I'm the one oh, who made all the mistakes. <laughs> I'm the one who used the way back without permission. The only mistake Mr. Peabody ever made was me. Okay, one more pause here. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And you're seeing uh, a gray area. You're seeing this is not yet perceptible. I couldn't even perceive it when I was working on it until they laid it out to me. I, I, I even was like, wait, what? And then I started going through the whole movie. I was like, oh, my gosh. You have got to be kidding me. And I'm going to show you examples of where we're, we're arriving. But this is the middle ground of a decade ago. And you're going to see where we got to now. But go ahead. Keep going. Sherman. You're absolutely right, Sherman. What kind of a father could this dog ever be to a boy? So pause Maybe there. Maybe you're pause right, Miss Grenion, but there's more. So, so the villain, the person you have been brought up to hate, is already putting herself against different sorts of parenthoods, okay? This is where uh, parenthood, marriage, is being broken down. People are going to, uh, just, are people associating marriage badly? Yes. Is marriage going to crap? A lot, yes. This is where... She is saying, you cannot have this relationship. Who does that sound like? Who does that sound like? It sounds like the illustrated version of us that someone thinks we are, that we are not. We're mean. It's a we're meme. evil. Yes, yes. It's, it's, you cannot do this. You, you, can't, you can't have this relationship in your life. We are the judge and we're the master and you hate her because she's cruel to animals. She's cruel to everything. And then at that moment is when she pulls out axes and starts hurling them and saying, the foundation of our society is the family. And then it goes out of control. Bonkers. <laughs> nuts. Yeah, keep going, keep going. People were saying they wished I would have like not put up a fuss and they would have kept it. 
because it would have been so blatant. But I didn't know at the time how to react. I only got into the defense mode because yeah. I was so worried uh, about what this was going to do to kids and things. So go on. One thing you haven't considered. What's that? I'm a dog, too. If being a dog means you're like Mr. Peabody, who never turns his back on you, and who's always there to pick you up when you fall, and loves you no matter how many times you mess up, if that's what it means to be a dog, then yeah, I'm a dog, too. <laughs> oh, gosh. This was the other end. There again. This is the other ending, and this is where it starts to dissolve. No one even knows what's going on. I mean, ironically, we have kids that think they're cats now. We, I, I, I can't even believe we've arrived there. But uh, and it's actually accepted. I, I, I yeah. I, I mean, I don't know what. Where do we go from there? I have no idea. So I don't even think they were trying for that. This was just the scrap together ending, which we had done several times, like on Madagascar Three, when we had to button up an ending uh, before it was going to go out. So keep going. All right, fine. You're all dogs, but you can't change the law. <laughs> oh! 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 You haven't seen the last of me, Peabody. You'll make a mistake eventually, and when you do, I'll be there. Brendan is mine. <laughs> Okay, seems, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you, 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 you get it. That's that's what it is. Now, if I weren't explaining this, would you perceive that? No, no, and you wouldn't know it. And most parents don't. And even when I was working on it, it was hard to perceive. But it's woven throughout the whole thing. And this is not the end game. This is the beginning. This was a decade ago. This is the beginning to what the real agenda is, the real things, and we're going to get to them now. Well, when you go through the real examples of what they cut out, this is just the same thing, just a lighter version, right? Yes. I mean, it, yeah. it's oh, well, not whole thing quite is as blatant. Version. It makes it very obvious that this is an agenda that is trying to be pushed. If, you, yeah, if you've got them throwing axes and they're talking about basically the family proclamation and the family is the foundation, and, and then they say, okay, fine, we'll take that part out. It's like yeah. They, well, when I when I when same they, fruit from the same tree. When I brought it up, and it was really hard. I sat on it for a month because I was like, "What are we doing?" When I brought it up, I had the meeting with my manager's manager. She was a really nice lady, and uh, I was like, I told her everything. I asked them to take my name off the credits. I was like, "Yeah, I can't do this." They thought I had another job offer. I didn't, and. Uh, what happened was it's like, she's like, okay, I got to go digest this. I can't believe it. Uh, and she even tried to defend it. But then when I explained what the producer and the director had brought up and what we were actually doing, and then she had to kind of come off it. Every single one of the meetings went like that once as soon as it actually had been divulged. And so what happened is I then had a uh, meeting with my direct manager and he brought me in and he wanted me to show him every single thing within the movie and other ones where there would be something that would offend an audience. And I said, I can do that because I know this audience. I know the audience were targeting i am it <laughs> so i can do this it only lasted like five minutes and i said well look you don't like and i was trying to help him understand i was like look what if we were putting in things where like we were uh putting in stories like where we wanted people to think it was okay to have firearms for defense which is something they hate and what if we were doing things that like george bush would like and they like lost their minds they lost their minds and i was like well that's how they are feeling when you're doing this, you are ripping apart things that, and that you're going into religion. You are ripping apart religion. And I stopped and said, look, just Google what we are doing. Google the words they're saying, Google the things. And they, they got a computer and they started Googling them and they Googled things like the foundation of our society and other things. And what popped up was Heritage Foundation, uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Catholic Church, other things. And he paused, his name's Damon. I actually love the guy. And, uh, but I, I think he's trapped. Um, or in a situation that he might not know how to help. And so I want to help. I want to help. Uh, so we don't do this to kids. Um, and so he looks up and he's like, what you're telling me is we're not being deceptive enough. And he ended the meeting. I couldn't believe it. I, I literally couldn't believe it. So yeah, that's what started. And then I had to go up to the higher ups and have meetings with them and so on and so on, which you can hear about in that other podcast. But let's keep going through the clips because that's what people want. 
they, they want to see examples and you're going to get more and more and more and more and more examples until you can see it wherever you're at and then you know how to deal with it. And how do you deal with it? You have to explain it. You have to be there. When, it, when it's an anti-man thing, you have to say, okay, am I really like that? Is this how men are? Do you really want people to be weak? Do you, want not, do you not want him to open up doors for you? Do you not want him to provide security for you? Do you not want him to be there when you need something? Is that how you want a man? Is a man do you want to go work a career where you just work all day? And that, that, is that what you want? Because every character is doing that. You want to go battle all day? Let's, let's forget about this uh, giving, uh, sustaining, and nurturing life stuff because it's useless, right? Like, is that, is that how life – this is how I talk to him. Is, is, that, is that how it is? And they know. They begin to see it. They say, no, it's not like that. I say, yeah, this is just a story. This is a movie. Or it's just a teacher. Or it's just a professor. And they're lying to you. Or it's just someone giving a talk in church, sadly. Or it's just someone who is most likely – been social engineered themselves and this is genuinely what they think is and now it's people who have been social engineered since a childhood and it is genuinely what they believe and so you have to be very delicate with them while still maintaining a brick wall around your principles not to ruin them because that's what crumbles everything you we, we need pillars right now to hold things together okay because there's a lot of people falling away uh in a lot of different breaking down and so that's how you can talk to them. That's how you can intervene and explain it to them. And then it can be what it is, frivol frivolous entertainment. It's candy. It's candy. Or hopefully it has some good moral values, has a good story, and so on. Uh, like, like, like more people are doing. Disney, DreamWorks basically went out of business, okay? Disney is on its way. This is the first time in our history. And ironically, Disney started with Snow White, and they might end the whole thing with another Snow White. This is going to be the worst bookends you've ever, you've ever created. But... They are not going in a good direction. Ironically, the windows are opening up for actually people to compete. This has never been the case. No one has been able to get on the turf of Disney. No one has been able to get on the turf of, of DreamWorks, which spawned from Disney. And, and so for the first time, they're their own worst enemy where people are creating other options. And there are other options from history, but for the first time, we can create other options. So again, they're either going to crash and burn, which I am trying to prevent, but if they, can't, if they keep going in the direction, there's no one who can stop it. They are falling on themselves like a like it's something. Oh, what is it like? Like a great and spacious building. And they're either going to crash and burn or they're going to correct it and go back to what they were and remember what their value is. Same thing with BYU and universities and churches and all types of things. They're going to have to go back and say, why are we actually here? Is it to produce propaganda, indoctrination and social engineering? And they better figure out that that is not the case because it is destroying their organizations faster than they can reverse it. And most of them are not able to reverse it fast enough. And their the problem is, I think I think, Andrew, is that some of those organizations do believe that's why they're there. That when they ask that question, why? And that's the great lie. That's it, the great it, goes, lie. it goes into this propaganda is what's most important. Uh, you see it moving into the medical field. I mean, just the psychology of field, the, 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 the therapeutic field. It's, it's like, this is why we need to do this. You could pull up psychology today or the American psychology association. And on the very front page, you're going to find DEI diversity, equity, and inclusion. Yeah. You're going to find yeah. all of these things as if this is their mission statement well, of, of why they exist already. So when they're asking themselves, why do we exist? This is what is getting put out in front. And I, and I just wonder, it, it almost seems to me that like with these studios you're speaking of, there, there's enough, there's obviously the outside pressure that gets there from politicians and, and other organizations and the loudest voices that are yelling. But it's the, to me, it's the personnel inside. It's, it's hiring that young, recent graduate, marketing graduate at Bud Light that thinks that putting Dylan Mulvaney up there is going to be the right answer for you know, this great marketing boom for Bud Light, right? And so it's this, I, I just, I, I, the personnel to me is is key on, on yeah. who these people are hiring. And and you're right, you're right. It, it, a lot of it is starting in universities. They might be the origination point of seeding all of this and this social engineering. The social engineering, this is important for people to understand, and it gives some light why I'm trying to save these organizations. I, I, I don't think myself able to save them. I just want to try, okay? Is because I believe part of the formula of social engineering is to destroy the organization in the process. Use them as a tool and then wipe them out. Disney, DreamWorks, uh, the Boy Scouts, churches, 
Uh, they are inherently good organizations. So if you can implant the idea you're talking about where young folks or anyone comes in with this, uh, what, do you, what do people call it, Tay? A woke agenda. They can pivot that, use their good values that they've produced over the last decades to be a tool of indoctrination. And then as soon as they're done, wipe the crap out of them so they're not around anymore. What's your, what are you left with? A dumbed down, non-cultural, dependent, sad culture that crumbles without vision, without light, without hope, without belief. Okay, that's what these things were created with. And so I do believe part of the plan is to take out the organization with it. And that's what's happened. If you watch what happened to Boy Scouts, they allowed it to in they allowed it to enter. I was actually a scoutmaster while it happened in San Francisco. So I got the letters asking me my opinion. What should we do? You are in the circle on the front lines of what is happening and where these decisions are going to be made. Had nothing to do with allowing gay leaders, nothing to do with that, and everything to do with inserting control. I told them that. I said, no one cares if a gay scout comes in. No one would care. You can teach them, you can help them, and you can prepare them to be a Boy Scout just like anyone else. No one cares about this and no one's going to say anything. And all they're going to do is they're going to use you. And by the way, they do not, these voices, they do not care about you. And this way, I actually made a movie for them. They have it. I made a movie. I recorded it in my little sash. And I said, Boy Scouts, this is my opinion. And I told them all as a scoutmaster and they threw it away. They threw it away. And what ended up happening is they appeased the screamers. They appeased the screamers. They went against their core value, preparing boys to be great men and being prepared and having all these skills and things. They put that aside, all right? And they put these other things as the priority. Literally in the book, the priority, the front of it is now their new uh, agendas and priorities, the social engineering. And then when it was all done, what did they do to Boy Scouts? Did they lift them up? Did they help them? Did they add folks to join them? Did they give them funding? No, they sued the crap out of them and now they have endless litigation going bankrupt, uh, litigation after litigation after litigation of so-and-so scoutmaster that abused a boy. Nothing in Boy Scouts teaches adults to abuse children. The porn industry does this. And Boy Scout masters are coming into scouts, having been indoctrinated from the porn industry, and they're exercising their disgusting things they've learned on kids. The Boy Scouts are not the problem. The porn industry is the problem, and they're using that to blame the Boy Scouts. They, they've, they've been engineered sexually to do these things. No one is attracted to a child. This has to be learned, engineered. And so they get it outside, they bring it in, and then that's the perfect ammo to take out the industry or the organization while they're doing it. And I know Satan has one treasure on his mind, one bigger than anything. And it's not those civilizations you can see all up and down like uh, the strip in Vegas that he's so proud of. It's the church, okay? He wants churches gone. And this is a very saucy, seductive way to get into them. And he uses love and he uses compassion and he uses a lot of deception to get in there. And once they're in there, the audience abandons. Once the audience abandons, it's basically worthless. They will not stay and help you. They will not stay and make sure you have a good future. They'll sue you and finish you off. And that's what we're seeing. And we're about to see what happened to DreamWorks. Why don't you go to the next video and we can see what happened to the end of DreamWorks. On NBC Bay Area, it's the end of an era. DreamWorks Animation, which gave us movies like Shrek and How to Train Your Dragon, is closing its Redwood City Studios. It's a cost cut. Hundreds of jobs will be cut. NBC Bay Area Scott Budman was invited to the studio's last hurrah. And Scott, you're in Redwood City. I just assumed I'd play the part of keeping you in the right direction. PDI is the Pixar DreamWorks, like Disney bought Pixar for those who don't understand. It is DreamWorks, but it's like how Disney bought Pixar because that's where we did the 3D. That place was gorgeous. That's where we ate lunch. That was the river we saw out of our window. I knew all those people there. We loved each other. These are not unintelligent, uncreative people. These are the top of the tops, and that's how it ends. You don't want a movie like that uh, for Brigham Young University. You don't want a movie like that for... 
oh, Disney, you don't want a movie like that for your churches. You don't want a movie like that. It is, this doesn't, it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't, you're, you're not happy. It all, all it ends up with, with we don't have more of what they could create with what they could do. And I want to show you what we lost. I want to show you what we lost. It, and this doesn't even have to be a religious film, even though it is a religious film, but you need to see what we lost. Potentially the greatest animation moment of all time. Go ahead. Here I am. Take the sandals from your feet. For the place on which you stand is holy ground. Who are you? I am that I am. I'm just going to pause here for a second. This is already, dream. you know, so contrary to what you're going to see typically when you go to the theater or turn yeah. on your, go you to your not, streaming. This is DreamWorks' first film. This is when he left. He left after the lawsuit with Lion King, started this in a library, mortgaged his house to make it happen. Uh, Spielberg came on, Geffen came on, they got him some funding. They were working out of the library. I've seen the storyboards. In, Who is like, this? Ka this is Katzenberg and the start of DreamWorks. This is what this was its vision to begin. This is what it started as. Not that keep playing it. Don't understand. I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are born of my mother, you heaven. You are our brother. What do you want? I have seen the oppression of my people in Egypt and have heard their... Got to stop it again just for a bit. Even if you're not religious, and all of the bosses were Jewish there, and they are fantastic at what they do. This is amazing. This is not just a story they wanted. This is their story. And uh, yeah, I mean, even if you're not religious, this is an anti-slavery movie. This is a good, this is good engineering. This is good. This is something we all want. Well, it's compelling. Yes, and, and just keep going. It's Cry. incredible. Stop it! Leave that man alone! So I have come down to deliver them out of slavery and bring them to a good land. A land flowing with milk and honey. And so unto Pharaoh I shall send you me it's a long clap i gotta keep stopping i know i'm sorry it's too good i couldn't shorten it <laughs> so keep going and you guys you'll see the reason i'm showing you this is to show you the beauty that these artists can create and what we can create and if they crash and burn we're going to create more of this it doesn't happen in a studio it happens from a visionary leader and cre a creative team it's going to happen one way or the other so keep, but this is what's- I to lead these people. They'll never believe me. They won't even listen. I shall teach you what to say. Let my people go. But I was their enemy. I was the Prince of Egypt, the son of the man who slaughtered their children. You've, you've chosen the wrong messenger. How, how can I even speak to these people? Who made man's mouth? Who made the deaf, the mute, the seeing, or the blind? Did not I? Now go! Stop it again. It's God. It's, uh, um, it's Iceman. It's Iceman. He is uh, Moses' voice, and he's God's voice. Isn't that cool how they did that? You know, it's interesting, Andrew. I don't think you'd see anything like this unless it was coming out of Angel Studios or... Well, that's uh, where we've gotten to. That's where we've gotten to. We've gotten to the studios have become hijacked. Uh, almost anything big has become hijacked where they're, and it's amazing. They're so huge and they're so scared. They're so, so huge and scared of what, like, what are people afraid of? Like you can do, you can create anything you want. You do not have to bow to some propaganda machine. Like you're, you're ruined. You're, 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 you're just wasting your life. We're, we're wasting our lives when we create and, and that is how the artists feel. 
during Peabody and Sherman, the artists were like yelling at each other. <laughs> it's so crazy. They hated the show. They hated it. My mentor, Kevin, oh my gosh. Carney, I miss you, bro. I think you went to Google. They, they are fighting in the halls over how crappy it is. And they're like, no, this is such crap. The boy is so, why is it so bad? Like, what is wrong with it? And, and they don't understand. We've destroyed the archetypes. We've destroyed the magic. We've destroyed the heart and soul of it. And this can happen in a video game. Like you said, uh, doctors, they're losing credible credibility by the day because they're forgetting what their value is, which is to provide health and, and not sell pills and, and push vaccines and stuff. So, so yeah, it's, it's happening across the board. Let's watch the end about God and then we'll, we'll move on. Gotta stop it again. <laughs> uh, just so everyone knows, this is such hard animation. This smoke and this 2D animation, it's almost a forgotten art. It, it, it's so tedious and it takes so long to do. Uh, it, it, it's almost a forgotten art. This is highly skilled, highly hi, highly important cultural uh, uh, blocks that we don't want to watch dissolve. So mm -hmm. let's keep going. So I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders. Take the staff in your hand, Moses. With it, you shall do my wonders. I shall be with you. We could cut it there. It's beautiful. So it's, it's, that's, it's worth saving. So let's yeah. move on. Talk to, about archetypes. <laughs> it's the archetype. And they had have they had God with them on that for sure. I mean, if you, you know, know like Jordan story, Peterson goes over this a lot. He talks about the narratives of a story and, and how a culture has to have these stories. Yes. You know, it's like anything. Yes. I mean, you have you have wives tales, you have Aesop's fables, you have uh, um, what are the nursery rhymes? You know, all of these things are passed down from mm -hmm. generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And we've mm -hmm. actually destroyed those also. Mm -hmm. there, rarely do you see that anymore. There are very few parents anymore that go through those with their kids anymore. Some of them, they look at them and they say, well, this is too harsh, you know, <laughs> or, or, but, but it's, they're, they're stories that build resilience in little kids. And how it's are like, things oh, going right now? This is a how consequence of making a bad decision. I mm. should not maybe wander out in the forest all by myself following this little trail, right? They when go, I'm a young they little go kid. go together. The, your world you live in and the stories that your culture embraces go together. And they're going together. We're now, I'm gonna give you guys some history, all right? This is Walt Disney himself, okay? He would be on my side in what I'm telling you. He would be on my side and I know he's weeping right now uh, as he watches what's happening to the most one of the most beautiful organizations ever created what it has become and look he had to deal with this even himself look what he look what he has to do and this is when he's uh talking to congress uh about how uh communism and people were trying to indoctrinate communist ideas through the megaphone and the audience and the reach that he had so go ahead i, I don't believe it's a political party i believe it's an un-american thing and uh, the thing that that I resent the most is that they are able to get into these unions and take them over. And I feel that, uh, that they really ought to be smoked out and shown up for what they are so that all the good free causes in this country, all the liberalisms that really are American can go out without this taint of communism. Hey, things worked. That mind right there and that opinion right there, he made things work. He made successful things happen. He inspired a lot of children. He has given a lot of good to a lot of kids and a lot of family. I'm one of them. I don't know one child that hasn't gone there and had their life elevated. And look what the perspective he had. He knew he had to preserve it. He knew that there were people sneaking into unions and using these other avenues to come in and use the audience and the reach they had. Even back in the, I think that was 47. Was that 47? 
uh, it, 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 even back in 47 to try to preserve the integrity. It's just like Enoch. You, th there are a couple elements of an organization that succeeds, and one of them is a strong, God-respecting leader who isn't afraid to go to battle. It's interesting. It's very interesting. You have got to have that visionary captain who isn't afraid to take slings, to take arrows, and will, and will go to bat to preserve the integrity of the organization. You're watching Disney go back and forth with CEOs. We had the same problem. You're, you're watching all, it, it, we're watching this in other spheres as well, that it's one of the elements of the breakdown that social engineering starts is the leadership starts to just crumble. Okay, and you start, yeah, anyways, let's go on to the next one. You're gonna see some other historical examples which are just like today. This clip has been canceled. This clip has cost Disney a hundred million dollars. This, not just this clip, the entire series has been canceled, okay? This would not be acceptable for a child to watch anywhere, whether it was a man and a woman, whether it was, it, I, I didn't even wanna go into what it can become. Look at where we have arrived. You saw the animation examples from Frozen, okay? People get on me, say, the, the, Anna and Elsa are sister, they are not a lesbian couple. I, I know, but they are not doing sister stuff, okay? They are not being shown in sister lights. They are being shown as a couple, okay? And men, every single man in that story to compliment is an idiot who can't solve anything, who should be very quickly flicked aside or he's downright evil, okay? So they're putting those in there. And that is how where people say, ah, it's not that bad, it's, it's whatever. Well, here's where we've arrived. We're here, we've arrived. And where does it go from here? I guess just intercourse on a bed, humping each other, anything goes with animals, satanic stuff. That's the next step because look where we are here. And this is one of the few times where I've had to tell the whole family, absolutely not, we, we can't. And I had already seen this show leading up to it. I was really excited for it. So I was bringing my family. I was like, Willow was a, was a piece, an archetypal piece uh, and story that I grew up with. It is such a great story. And uh, they're doing a series. What a great day. What a great day for Disney. Well, congratulations. They destroyed it. And this is how they did it. They bring up these girls and every man is again an idiot and she just is so unfulfilled with any man and then this is what it goes to because this obviously is going to be what fulfills people so go ahead stop stop you scared the bloopings out of me i'm leaving i can't say goodbye i can't i know you're upset i'm not here pause for a second pause pause for a second just so you know, these are two women, okay? Just so you know, she just put her hand over her face while she was sleeping and then mounted her. I, I just need to verbalize what is happening because sometimes your eyes have been so conditioned with filth that you're just like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Let, let me just verbalize it so you understand what's happening. Okay, keep going. Well, the other thing I think people need to understand is that these things are all, you know, someone or several people's minds are saying, this is what we're doing. Oh, it's not, it, we watch this as observers, accident. but the participants, the creators, they are saying, this is how we're going to make this scene. We're not just watching some random thing happen, right? It, it, it's, there are people creating this for a specific reason. The lens, the lighting, the pillow, where they're sitting, why there's drapes on the side, where, what the color of the lighting looks like, the dominance, the hairstyle, the, uh, the, the, the 15 different shots right before it and the 15 shots after it to make you feel a certain way, the music, the lack thereof, the editing, the how long something happens, how long they kiss, how long they don't kiss, how long they hug, all of it, how long they die, how long they don't die, all of that causes one impulse in your body and that is emotion. And that goes into your brain and that forms your ideas and your behaviors and your views. And then this spills out into everything else you do. This is why they're doing it. So, so keep going. So what, by, the, by the way, you have two women mounting each other in a kid's show. Go ahead. Clearly for the first time in my entire life. If you will, you would understand that running away is... This isn't about marrying, great. I mean, it is, but I'm looking for something. <laughs> it's not here. That's out there. Beyond the barrier. Okay. I, that's when I stopped it. I was like, my gosh. My gosh. And 
like, why did you have to ruin Willow? Why? Why? Like, why? Why? You destroyed a child's upbringing, okay? Has nothing to do with the story. Has nothing to do. Iceman would be so pissed. He would be so pissed. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's, it's tragic. And who is the one who is suffering the most? We get it. The parents get it. It's gone so far. We understand. We're dealing with it. The person who is suffering the most is Disney and these studios. And they're falling out of their own way. They're crushing themselves, just like you saw what happened to DreamWorks. It, the, the artists don't deserve it. They didn't go to school and they didn't, they didn't plan their lives. And they didn't hone skills like I have since I was you know, a child in this room training how to paint mountains. They didn't work their whole lives to create a propaganda piece for a social engineering campaign to make America weak so it can be taken over. And that is the end goal. There it is. We need to make America weak so its abundance, its wealth, its freedom can be consumed by whoever wants it, whether it's internal or external, and that's what's happening. And we're becoming weak. We're becoming very weak. And these movies are helping us along the way. All right, so Andrew, there's been an, an abundance of clips here. I think there's a few more. Do you want to go over those? Just explain to us what they are. Well, we've got like seven more clips. Um, there's a video game clip. It's so abhorrent. It's like one from Xbox where the guy beats the guy to death with his own arm. It's why I left Xbox. I was like, okay, we can't do this. There's Pixar clips. There are um, uh, Star Wars clips. There are now modern clips for what we're going through right now and how social engineering is hitting us today. The whole I have a clip about the whole COVID thing um, of how they were pushing all of the propaganda through COVID. And then also a clip about how local news is doing it as well. So I throw it across the board, but it was just too much, too long. If you guys want more, I can send them to you. If you want to see how it's hitting adults as well as children, I can. But I don't want, this one's a little more heavy. I wanted to end on some solutions, if that's okay. Can I tell Yeah, let's do that. We, maybe we'll bring you back for a third episode eventually. I don't know if people can handle me for that long. <laughs> but, and we got so much work to do. But um, basically, what, what, who cares? What are we going to do about all this? What, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? When I was at DreamWorks, um, they taught me something that the audience is in control. It was one of the things they said. I said, they, they were, it was one of the higher ups, Holly, uh, one of the highest producers. And she was saying, well, what would keep you here? And I said, well, why don't we just tell the audience what we're doing? Why don't we just tell them? And she said, well, we're never going to tell the audience because they would be furious. And, and uh, I was like, wow. And then, and then also she said, uh, and I was like, well, what if we uh, just took it out? And she said, well, we'll never take it out unless an audience gets, gets mad. And I was like, holy moly, holy, wow. This is the, the audience is in control. I had no idea. They are in control of the content. You are in control of what happens and what doesn't happen. But no one is fighting for the rights of the audience. They don't even know they have rights. They don't even know they have control. They don't even know they have say. The audience has full say over the content. You think a film is funded by an investor or a studio. It is not funded by the investor. It is funded by the audience. The investor puts money down to create it as the risk in hopes that the audience will pay them back. You have full control, but no one has exercised this. No one has helped with it. No one has actually done anything about it. So with all of the responses I've been getting from everyone, uh, people in the industry and a lot out, I said, okay, well, I am super, super busy, but we can do something. We can begin to do something. So we got the audience, dot us, okay? This sounds stupid, but it's not. This is, this is gonna be good, okay? I need like five of you. I need five of you to run this. I, I, we're gonna do this. And the audience is going to start being educated on what their rights are. The audience is gonna start having people fight for them. The audience is gonna begin drafting letters and drafting things to both politicians and to both studios, letting them know we do not want idiotic fathers in every single movie. We do not want stressed out, freaked out mothers in every single movie. We do not want heterosexual couples to always be awful, okay? We're going to start letting them know that. We do not want you to target churches. We do not want you to target Christians. We do not want you to target anyone unless they are genuinely doing wrong things dishonesty, hurting people, doing genuine things that have a backstory. They have never been kept in check. They have never been kept in balance and you have full control. So a lot of people reached out. If any of you have time, 
I will show you what to do. I have a huge thing ahead of me with the sex trafficking thing I have to do, but I can help. We can help. We can do this. Okay. So I need, if you have time, if you are old soul in a new world, if you will need some lawyers, okay, we will need some people to help with this, but it's time for you to start putting pressure. Okay. Pressure not to break down, which it might require some, but it's time for you to start putting pressure to hold things together. Okay. So if you have the time and you have the availability, I need a couple people and I need you to start this. Okay. I already have the, I already have the things to get it going. This was not something I thought of until last night when you asked me to come back on this. I said, what can they do? Everyone, people ask me, what can you do? Well, you can shut it off. You can get mad. You can, you can, you would do all these things or you can just fix it. And you're right. A lot of the people who comment and say, yes, they do respond to money. They do respond to lawsuits. They do respond to pressure and they do respond to people letting them know, look, you can return to the fundamental archetypes and we will be there to support. You say, well, what, what, what enforcement does an audience have? Everything. You hold all enforcement just by you doing one thing, letting them know that you are going to walk away. You walk away, it is over. Disney is maybe, I don't know how close they are to shutting down their studio, but given the track record and the amount of losses they've had, they're not in a good position, okay? This is what happened to DreamWorks. They could only handle a couple flops. That's what they call flops when they completely uh, go belly up. So if you're very interested in this, I need a couple people. I will help you how to do it. It is going to be the moment when the audience has the control that DreamWorks taught me they have. They're going to be able to have a say. They're going to be able to have rights. They're going to be protected. And they are not going to have to have everything just shoved in their face and have absolutely nothing they can do about it any longer. The studios are going to know they're being watched. The people are going to be able to respond. Okay. The schools, the teachers, you could change the title from the audience to the student body. Okay. Or the citizens or the employees, the employees are finally going to have someone who says you cannot force this employee to do this thing or fire them. You cannot force all this indoctrination on your employees or fire them. You cannot force this. Someone has got to stand up for them. Okay. So if you're interested in helping the audience needs a say, the audience needs help. It's not something I can do because I already have an insane amount of stuff on my plate, but if you don't and you want to help, I need a couple of you to reach out and I need it to get it started. You, we, us, it, our culture, our country, our church, our video studios, our movie studios, our video game studios, they need you to do this. Okay. Like you said, the culture and the society follows the stories and you can see where they're both going. So this is how we're going to reverse it. Okay. You could do this. It's just like Enoch. It's just like Zion. You could do this. And I, and I, I want to help. Okay. So if you're out there and you've been waiting, this is the time, this is the moment, this is the time to respond. Appreciate that, Andrew. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, again, it's the great and spacious building that you see out there. That's why people don't do it. Right. They see the pointed fingers and the mocking and, and the humiliation, and maybe I shouldn't do anything. And, and it always seems to me that you've got a, a majority, a silent majority. The reason they're silent is because they don't know, they don't know, they, they don't know. And they live in that, place of order already They're, they have some foot in the order and this non-order that wants to tear everything down this chaos that wants to tear everything down they're the ones with the loud voices right they they're the ones with the loud voices that want to change the order you're living a good life you, you, whatever it is you, you, there's some order in your life and so you think that there isn't a reason that you need to have a louder voice but you do i mean people need to realize uh, People always say, and they don't always say, but oftentimes they say, Greg, you're fear-mongering. This is all fear-mongering. No, no, and we're like, building back up. We're building, not tearing and I will down. Double down. It is worse than you think. It's worse <laughs> than you think. Yeah. And and it's it's happening behind the veils. You know, it's happening behind the curtains. It's happening, it's happening in the in the in the studios. It's happening in the universities. It's happening everywhere. And it and it's it's worth protecting. Yes, it is it worth is. protecting. It is worse than you think, but you are stronger than it. So there are loud voices tearing them down. We will be a voice that will build them, that will help them, build them to back what their value is. Okay? And if they don't listen, we try. If they don't listen, we try. And I don't see another way than other than trying. Andrew, really appreciate it. Great stuff. Thanks so much for coming back. 
You bet. You bet. I hope your audience loves it. And I look forward to hearing from you. Andrew Redford Young at gmail.com if you want to contact or just contact, contact Greg and you can get out to me. Yeah, we'll put, we'll put that in the description box, box if you like as well. Thank right, you, thank Andrew. You. Appreciate it. Yeah, go get it. All right.